So a very special welcome to all of you this day, this uh, July 4th, Independence Day, as we celebrate our great country and our many freedoms. Uh, just thank you for uh, taking the time to be with us. Uh, we celebrate you as we gather as God's people, that we have the freedom to gather. Yes, I know we're still in respective homes and we're doing this uh, online, but nonetheless, we continue to be God's people. And we're glad that, uh, that you're with us. Today, the uh, the lesson I'm focusing on is our second lesson, the uh, Second Corinthians, where uh, Apostle Paul talks about our weakness, that in our weakness we are st is our strength. I know it seems strange, it's not the way the world normally thinks, but God is able to use us in the midst of our, our imperfections, our, our weaknesses, our frailties, and uh, God can shine through as we place our dependence upon him. So I hope, uh, hope this service today is uh, helpful for you. Uh, just glad to, again to have you with us. So at this time, let us begin our service. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and to your peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. This time I turn the service over to our music team as they share their gifts of music. God bless. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. 
Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Power and riches, wisdom and might, all honor and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. The Lord be with you and also with you. Good morning. You are loved, you are valued, and you are valuable, and God loves you so much. God loves you so much that he gave his only son so that you could spend eternity in heaven and at peace with him. Wow. I think that that is such a powerful message. And growing up, for me, that was something that I valued so, so very much. Because it felt good to know that I was loved. Sometimes it's hard because you don't know how loved you really are. But God tells us time and time again through his word, that he loves us and he cares for us and that we are valued by him. And sometimes we forget that and it's hard for us to remember that at times. So I wanted to remind you, you are loved. You are loved by God and God wants us to share his love to everyone we know and to spread his love and joy throughout the earth. Go tell someone today that you love them. Look at them and tell them you are loved. In fact, do right now. Look over, who's next to you? You are loved, say it. You are loved. Now I want you to say this. You are loved by God and you are loved by me. And I want you to take this message out. Call someone, call a family member, call a friend and say, you know what? I love you and God loves you too. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much that you give us love day in and day out, God. I pray that we can share that love with the world and sharing that love starts with us. May we have the courage to go out and tell people that they are loved by you. And may we show the love that you give us to everyone we meet. And in your precious name, God, amen. He said to me, O oh mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, 
Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. The Apostle Paul writes about his visions and about his life in Christ. From 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. I know a person of Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wished to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. And so our gospel lesson for this, the sixth Sunday of Pentecost, is from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with verse one. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Moses, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor, except in their own hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. And so they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so let us pray. 
Lord, we thank you on this special day, this July 4th, as we celebrate our independence, as we celebrate our great country. Lord, we also celebrate our ability to be able to gather as your people. And yes, I know we're still in our respective homes, but Lord, we remain your people nonetheless. Oh Lord, come now. Come and fill our hearts, our lives, that they truly would overflow. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. In this I pray. Amen. Well, as we know, today our nation celebrates Independence Day, which commemorates the day that the original 13 colonies joined together to declare their independence from Great Britain. In fact, the first time we were ever referred to as the United States of America was in the Declaration of Independence, which was accepted by the leadership of the 13 colonies, as you know, on July 4th, 1776. July 3rd, we were a collection of colonies. July 4th, we were the United States of America. And so that's why we call July 4th the birthday of our nation. So I hope you take some time, time to recognize and to give God thanks for the many blessings that we enjoy as a nation. Take some time to consider what virtues make our nation strong, what obstacles make us weak, and what, what part each of us can play in building a nation that we hope will last another 245 years. Of course, there's some well-meaning people who believe that pointing out any weakness in our republic is unpatriotic. They're like the business owner who would not allow his wife or any of his employees to point out any of his shortcomings. And so he went to a formal company banquet where he was asked to say a few words. And there he stood before a large group of his employees and their spouses. And for 30 minutes, he had a large piece of lettuce stuck firmly between his two front teeth. <laughs> Everyone saw it. But none of them had the courage to draw it to his attention. Sometimes I have to say the person who points out our weaknesses to us is our most valuable friend. Today's lesson is from 2 Corinthians. It's about weaknesses. It's about personal weaknesses. Let me just say we all have them, pastors included. Doesn't matter what image we present to the world. Doesn't matter how much money we have in our bank account. Doesn't matter what degree or title we have at work. We all have weaknesses. The problem is we live in a prosperous, image-driven society. Nobody puts their weaknesses on Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook. We only put out our best, most airbrushed image out there. The last thing we want our friends to see is our flaws. Some of our weaknesses are physical. Some are mental. Some are moral. Some of those weaknesses have to do with our work. Some of their family life some with our relationship with our Lord. Some of us, for example, have short tempers. Others of us struggle with depression and anxiety. Some of us are too proud. Others of us lack backbone. We give in too quickly. But all of us are weak in some area of our life. St. Paul had his weaknesses. One in particular caused him much heartache. We don't know for certain what it was. He called it his thorn in the flesh. Some have suggested that St. Paul suffered from epileptic seizures. If so, he was in good company. Two of the most powerful men who ever lived, Julius Caesar and Napoleon, were epileptics, as have been many other great individuals throughout history. In St. Paul's day, sorry to say there are no medications to control seizures. If that was his thorn, he was stuck with it. St. Paul prayed that God would deliver him from his affliction. Three times he beseeched God about this matter. But God's answer to him was, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And note those final words. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, God seemed to say to Paul, Paul, trust me. I will take care of you. And I can use your weakness to demonstrate my power. We can learn from Paul's experience. Paul not only learned to accept his sword in the flesh, even began to boast about his weakness in order to show the power of Christ. I believe there's a wonderful lesson there for all of us. Our weakness, whatever it may be, can become our strength if we will commit it to God. Our weakness can become a strength, first of all, if it causes us to grow. When we can grow beyond fear, beyond self-centeredness, beyond immaturity, then we can reflect God's glory. Yes, God's glory may shimmer in our strengths, but it shines in our weaknesses. When others see us grow in patience, wisdom, courage, and faith through our challenges 
and our heartaches. That's when God's glory shines a convincing light into the hearts and minds of those around us. That's what causes them to say, I see God in you. I want what you have. Some of you might remember tennis superstar Arthur Ashe. A much respected man, Ashe, while still at the height of his career, contracted AIDS from a blood transfusion during heart surgery. Fellow athletes admired Arthur Ashe for his skill and class on the court, but the world especially came to admire him even more for his courage in facing this tragic illness, which led to his untimely death. In an interview, Ash commented, if I were asked why me about my troubles, I would have to ask why me about my blessings? Why am I winning Wimbledon? Why am I marrying a beautiful gifted woman and having a wonderful child? What an incredible perspective. If I asked why me about my troubles, he said, I would have to ask why me about my blessings. Arthur Ash understood that God uses both our joys and our sorrows to grow us into people, people that reflect his glory, his character, his priorities. As someone has said, our disappointments are God's appointments. By God's grace, painful experiences or situations can help us grow. It's only human to pray for God to fix our troubles. The Apostle Paul had done that more than once. He said three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Pleaded, begged. So what do you do when God doesn't fix your most grievous problem? That's the time when you pray for God to reveal himself in your troubles. Verse 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When we give up on our own strength and rely totally on God to help us endure troubles, that's a point when we discover the true nature of God's character and the true faithfulness of God's promises. Have you reached a point in your life where you are pleading with God to change you or to change your circumstances? Does it seem like God is silent in your struggles, like he's maybe in, uh, on vacation over in Hawaii somewhere? Instead of asking God to fix your circumstances, ask God to reveal himself in your circumstances. Admit that the only way you'll get through this is with God's strength. And look, look for opportunities to grow in courage and compassion and wisdom. Our weaknesses can become strengths if they help us to grow. They can also become strengths if they make us more determined to give our best in all circumstances. Remember, your life is not about you. If you believe in God as your creator, then you know that God made you for a greater purpose than your own happiness and than your own comfort. When people look at you, at your character and your choices and your priorities and your actions, they should see the power and the truth and the love and the wisdom of God. Other people should feel some impact from your life. They should be inspired or comforted or challenged or changed because of their contact with you. So how you choose to respond to your weakness, it truly matters. Bethany Noel Murray, she's an artist from Boston. Her paintings look like fantasies of magical forests filled with light and colors and strange shapes. Fans of her work describe it as looking at a beautiful landscape through a kaleidoscope. The secret to Murray's unique and beautiful paintings lies in the pain, the pain that she suffers. You see, Bethany Noel Murray has suffered from chronic migraines for over 20 years. In addition to the intense pain of the headaches, she also experiences sensitivity to light and sound and distortions in her vision during a migraine. So rather than giving up her art and to hide in bed, Murray turns her pain into beauty. As she says, my paintings have been proof to myself of what I experienced during an attack, and despite the pain, I made the choice to see the good, the weird, and the beautiful. Yes, God may, may shimmer in our strengths, but he shines in our weaknesses. If we let our weaknesses lead us to grow, and if it causes us to give our best effort in all circumstances. Our weakness can also become a strength if it helps us change our life's course. Sometimes what seems a weakness is only a signal that we might be pursuing the wrong trail. One of the most revealing lines in literature appears in those, that opening paragraph of Millie's Winnie the Pooh, where the author writes, I quote, Here is Edward Bear coming downstairs now, bump, 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 in the back of his head, behind Christopher Robin. It is, as far as he knows, the only way of coming downstairs. But sometimes he feels that there really is another way. If only he could stop bumping for a moment and think of it. 
End of quote. <laughs> so let me just say, if you keep bumping your head coming down the stairs, maybe it's time for you to stop for a moment and think if there is another way it might be done. Sometimes our so-called weaknesses are simply warning signs to us that we might be on the wrong road. Since it's the day we celebrate our independence, I thought I might tell you a story about one of our best known figures in that battle for independence. He was a man who needed to begin again. His name was Patrick Henry. And even though Patrick Henry had been revered for most of, his, of our history as a patriot and orator, for years of his life, Patrick Henry, he was a miserable failure. He and his brother opened a store, but it failed. Next, Patrick's father-in-law set him up farming. However, he also failed as a farmer. Finally, on the advice of friends, Patrick turned to law. He was a natural persuader and a captivating orator. As a lawyer, Patrick was an instant success. Further, he was exactly the voice that was needed, that was needed to launch the colonies to break away from England. Give me liberty or give me death, were his famous words. It was a perfect sentiment for the time. Though he failed early in life, Patrick Henry was not a failure. He was simply in the wrong field for much of his life. And finally, and most important of all, our weaknesses may become strengths if they remind us of our dependence upon God. I can just hear St. Paul boasting, can't you? Look at me, he would say. I once persecuted the church. Look at me, a man who has to battle this humiliating affliction, this thorn in the flesh. Yet Christ has used me to plant churches all over the known world. Yes, Paul was a man of tremendous intellect. He was also a man of unquestionable persuasive powers. Perhaps if it had not been for his thorn in the flesh, he would have leaned upon his own ability rather than the power of God working through him. And you and I, we would never have heard the name of Paul. His weakness became a strength. His scar became a star. His hurt became a halo. And the same thing can happen to us. If our weaknesses help us to grow, if our weaknesses make us more determined to succeed, if our weakness causes us to try new things, and especially if our weakness causes us to rely upon God. Yes, God has the power, the authority, and the mercy to answer our every prayer and to take away our every weakness. He can make our life as smooth and comfy as a, as a velvet banquet, blanket. Why doesn't he? Because our life is meant to be a reflection of God's love, and of God's power. And God's power is made perfect in weakness. Let me just say, I pray that we have the faith to say with the Apostle Paul, for when I'm weak, then I am strong. And may we never forget God's words to us, where he clearly says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. For I pray it may be so. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. And happy July 4th. Let us pray. Lord, today we are reminded of all those who have sacrificed for our freedom. Let us not take this freedom, both physical and spiritual, for granted. May we always remember that a very high price was paid for it. And for some, it cost their very lives. Lord, today bless those who have served and who continue to serve this country. Help us never to take your blessings for granted. Bring peace, healing, and protection to all peoples and nations. And may we live in a way that glorifies you, Lord. Give us the strength to be a blessing in someone's life. Grant us the opportunity to lead others into the freedom that can be found in knowing your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe God's grace can work through and transcend electronic communication. Through our spiritual communion, the reality of Jesus and the Father's love, in and through the Holy Spirit is operating and present in our hearts and in our minds. And so let us pray. And so to you, O Lord, I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lord, I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart, 
Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, and let me never be separated from you. O Lord, may I live in you, and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. And so again, we want to thank you for joining us this day. We hope this service today has been helpful in your Christian journey. Please know our love and prayers are with each and every one of you. And again, if we can ever be of any help, uh, do, do not hesitate to call us or email us at the church office. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you.